Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Over the past few months, I've been seeing a lot of videos on a relatively new photo editing application called Radiant Photo. Apparently, a lot of you have been seeing those videos as well because a few of you have emailed me asking me about it. Well, I've been meaning to try it out, but you know, everything is more important than everything else and I just really haven't had the time to look at it. That is, until last week. Out of the blue, someone from the company emailed me unsolicited, and gave me a free license key for Radiant Photo. So I tried it out, and for the past few days, I've been working with it and trying to learn it the best I can. So in today's video, I'm going to try to show you Radiant Photo. Now, I am a relative newbie at it as well, but I'll do my best to try to show you what it's all about. Now, I do want to stress, they are not paying me to do this video, and I am not an affiliate for Radiant Photo. Although, if they do have affiliations available, I may apply to be a, an affiliate in the future. With that said, they did give me the software for free, so in effect they are paying me, they're paying me with free software. With that said, I'm going to try to do my best to give you an unbiased demonstration of the application. Now, I have Lightroom open. Radiant Photo does work as a plugin in Lightroom and Photoshop, but I'm not going to use it as a plugin in Lightroom today. I'm going to use it as a standalone app. The reason why I have Lightroom open is because I want to show you this unedited RAW file. It was taken with Nikon Z72. No editing has been done on it at all. I want you to see what it looks like because I'm going to take this same RAW file and I'm going to open it up into Radiant Photo and Radiant Photo will do some editing to it automatically. So I want you to see what it looks like unedited. Now I'm going to go to Radiant Photo, and we'll open it up there. And when I do, you'll see that Radiant Photo is going to do editing to it. So I wanted you to see it in Lightroom without Radiant Photo touching it at all. Then, once it opens here, you can see it's edited. Now, I could give you a before after here. There's this little slide bar, right? But I just wanted to show you in Lightroom the unedited RAW file. There it is there. So Radiant Photo automatically will look at the image and determine what type of image it is. You can see over here on the left-hand panel has something called Smart Presets. It determined that this is a landscape image and it chose that Smart Preset and did editing to it. You can see there's a number of different types of Smart Presets. There's three different landscape presets. There's three different people presets. So it does edit you know, people um, as well. In a future video, I will do an image with a person so you can see how you edit people in Radiant Photo. Newborns of babies, animals, food and drink, flowers and plants, underwater black and white image also says auto radiant up here, or I guess a general image. So it automatically looked at this image, determined it was a landscape, and did editing to it. Now, if you don't like the editing, you could go over to the right hand panel and you could override some of the settings. There are two different types of edit panels. Right now I'm in what's called Quick Edit. Quick Edit is meant for you to get in and out of Radio Photo as fast as possible. Load the image in, it's going to pick a smart preset. It's going to just have a minimal number of sliders over here to help you tweak the image to you know your liking and then you're done. So you can see up the top it has strength and color. Now as soon as I move, watch, see how it has landscape over there? As soon as I move any of these, you could see it takes off that smart preset because I'm overriding the preset, right? So you could come in, if there was a person in there, deep skin tone, you could do that, exposure. But you could see that, I'm gonna move these to extremes. You know, that one's kind of more, but they're not, they're actually more subtle adjustments than you might imagine. Um, light diffusion, depth. Contrast, depth. Definition, depth. You can see vibrancy. That's going to make it real colorful. It takes a second to kick in. There it kicks in. But, you know, if you totally screw up the image like this, just go back and click on that uh, preset that it was using, the landscape preset, and you're good to go. So that's the smart editing for the quick edit panel. If you go to the detailed edit, you can see that we have a lot more controls over here on the right. We still have some smart editing controls up here at the top, strength, color, and that skin tone. Uh, below that, we have a histogram. The histogram has clipping indicators. You could turn those on. You could see that with that preset, I'm clipping the shadows a little bit. That's where the blue overlay is. I'm clipping the highlights a bit up here. That's where the red is. 
You can turn those off like that. Next to that, we have crop tool. Uh, next to that, you can just flip the image. You know, nothing there. So nothing, you know, rotate the image and so on. So let's leave the histogram open for now. Then below the histogram, we have just general editing controls. So we have tone, color, details, graduated filter, and finishing tools. Next to that, if this was a portrait, I could edit the portrait here. You can see face selection, eyes, face, skin, makeup. And again, in a future video, I'll cover that. And then over here, we have color grading. So we could do full color grading to an image uh, with Radiant Photo. And it has some kind of LUTs down here, some looks, they call it, that you could click on uh, to give your image a specific look or color grade. Now, I'm not going to do anything with that today. We'll go back to the general editing, though. Let's open up Tone. And it doesn't have like a lot of sliders you might be used to that would be, let's say, in, you know, on one, Luminar, uh, Lightroom, Camera Raw, stuff like that. Uh, does have exposure, you know, or you could just use like medium, high. And you can see it's not really, it takes a second to render. See, it moved uh, exposure to 32 when I was on high. If I go back to low, see, it moved it down to 10. Uh, face aware is off. There's no people in here anyway. Super contrast is turned on. Turn that to the right. Give it a second to render. You can see how it does there. And we'll leave that there. We have light diffusion. Turn that on. Now this is more of a subtle adjustment. Let me just max that out and give it a second to render. You can see what it does maxed out. Let's bring it all the way down. Give it a second to render. And you can see there. Uh, there's depth. And we have, this is more to give your image more definition. Move it to the right. You can see what it does. There, you could also affect contrast if you prefer. It's just two different variations of depth. You have a contrast or, or definition, uh, one or the other. And they just have slightly different looks. Uh, again, there's no people here. Now, here's white point and black point. This is where you would probably turn on those clipping indicators. And these um, work maybe a little odd. They're not like in a center point with minus 100 to plus 100. They start at zero and you only move them up. So if... The white point, like I'm clipping up here, the, the, the highlights up here, if I take that white point, move it to the extreme right, give it a second to render. You can see how it took some of that away. It took it all away. Here's black point, same thing. If I move it to the extreme right, see if it does anything here. A little bit. Didn't get, it wasn't able to fully rid the clipping, but I don't mind the clipping, especially the, of the um, shadows. I don't mind clipping that. We'll turn those clipping indicators off. So that's tone. We jump down to color, and you can see we have color contrast. This is something that's in Luminar, I believe, that isn't in other apps. You can see what it does. It could make quite a difference to an image. Just let it render. See, and if you ever screw up, just go back to your uh, smart preset over here to start over. Um, we have fidelity. Turn that on, see what that looks like. Again, these are all going to affect color. We have vibrancy. We have tint correction. So if you have a color cast in your image, you could correct it here. Or if you want to add, let's say, a color cast to your image, you could do that there. Sky toning. Blue sky royal. Let's see what that looks like. We'll just spin that right up. You can see. Let's go back to our <laughs> our uh, smart preset. But you get an idea. I think you could kind of different type of controls here compared to a lot of other apps. So there is probably going to be a bit of a learning curve, but you know, it's just stuff you sample, you know, try it out, see if it works, see if it does something you like. If it, you don't like it, undo it. Uh, corrective filter, go to color, cyan corrective filter. These are as though you had the filter on your camera uh, and you were shooting film. So we'll undo that. So we have this color section here as well. Below that we have details, the sharpening and noise reduction. And there isn't really, this was probably shot at ISO 64, I would, if I remember right. See, nothing really there to worry about. Um, sharpening's fine. So typical sharpening uh, things there. We have graduated filter, which I'm not going to be doing anything with today. Uh, but see, we could add a vignette maybe. Take that down more of a radial filter. As you can see that I chose here, here's the graduated filter there. 
Quote the radio filter. A little bit of a vignette. All right. So that's all in there. And then we have finishing tools here. Roll that open. You could adjust the color temp, tit, exposure, contrast, highlight, shadows, whites, blacks. So anything you need to readjust, you can do so here. Now, these are the more typical sliders you may be used to from minus to plus. It starts in the middle, though. So, anyway, those are finishing tools. And... Really, that's the gist of it. It's a relatively easy app to use, although if you're coming over from Luminar on one, um, and really just about any other app, it might take you a little bit to get used to it because stuff is a little bit different. If you're not into photo editing at all, but you're shooting raw, so you try to photo edit, it might be the app you'd want to use because of the smart presets, and you could use Quick Edit to just tweak them a little bit and you know get a good edit the downside to this uh in my opinion is i noticed as i was doing a lot of different images it tends to give you the same look all the time and that's fine if you have a specific style you want to stay to but you may not want to you may want to experiment and have one image be very contrasty let's say and another image to be uh softer more ethereal something like that so it's going to take a little more work to get different looks uh, from image to image to image because these smart presets pretty much put the same look on your image every single time. But it's something I think you need to experiment with. Um, from what I've seen over there at their website is they do have fully working free trials. So you give it a try. Uh, see if it's something that you might use. There's before, there's after. Again, I'm not an affiliate for them. I do not have any discount code available or anything like that. But I may, if they do have affiliations available, I may apply to be an affiliate for the sole reason, well, of course they'll pay me if you make, you know, so I wouldn't, I'd be lying if I said the sole reason. Uh, but one of the main, main reasons, truthfully, is that they may give me a discount code for my customers, or my customers, for my viewers to use uh, to save some money on the product. But we'll cross that bridge if and when we get to it. So that is is Radiant Photo. I stumbled my way through this presentation the best I could. I apologize it was so choppy. But again, I'm kind of a newbie at it as well. Hopefully, um, future videos will be better. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.